Good morning. Welcome to Mass, streamed live from All Saints Catholic Church here in Gladstone, Michigan. To prepare for the celebration of the Eucharist, join me in turning your whole heart to God. Let's begin. Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Parish. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. The readings can be found on page 592 in the Missalette. Please join in singing number 189, Rejoice Jerusalem, number 189. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who calls us each to conversion, be with you always. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us heed the Lenten call to conversion of heart by calling to mind our sins and our need for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to God and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. 
then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, 
the one who raised Christ from the dead, will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling within you. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus, from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother, Lazarus, who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, the Son of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then he told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And every, everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, 
the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house, comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some said to them, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you go to the Holy Land today, just two miles outside of Jerusalem, there's this narrow road that cuts through the area that used to be the village of Bethany. Not much to see there. The only thing that might slow you down are two little signs above a small doorway in an old on an old stone wall. One sign is blue and the other is orange. All the signs say is, Tomb of Saint Lazarus. If you have the courage to venture through that doorway, it leads immediately to a short stone, stone stairway. The blocks are rough and steep, but only about eight steps. Those steps lead down to a, to a small chamber and then another set of steps. The second steps go even deeper, about 12 steps down, curved and dangerously steep. If you are brave enough to go down there, you have to walk around this small railing to yet another series of steps. Step after step, down, 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 buried deep the tomb of Lazarus. When Jesus said, Lazarus, come out, well, now you know why he had to shout. Help me figure this out, please. Martha and Mary send the Lord a message. Our brother Lazarus is very sick. In other words, we need you now. Jesus gets the message from his friends and so what does he do? The gospel says, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, Jesus remained for two days in the place where he was. Is this the way Jesus treats his friends? He doesn't come when there is an emergency. He cured blind people. He restored a crippled man's hand 
lame people start jumping around thanks to Jesus, if he can do all this, he can certainly help Lazarus. But in a critical moment, Jesus not only doesn't show up, he delays on purpose. What's going on there? I'll bet you once or twice in your life, you've been there too. When something goes bad, when everything's falling apart, Lord, we need you to come now. We need you because the baby is really sick. We need you because there's been a bad accident. We need you to show up, to be here with us because I lost my job and the house payment is due. You have to show up now because I've piled up so much debt from four years of college, I'm going to have to declare bankruptcy. There is no time to waste because my drug test for work is tomorrow morning and I am not going to pass. Come on, Jesus. Father Jamie always says that you love us. If that's true, why are you taking so long? Why won't you show up and help me? When the people Jesus loves are in need, why does he delay? It is a vexing question, enough to make you question the whole idea of faith. To answer that question, I'd like to do something risky. Let's not candy coat the next part of the story with a saccharine sweet reflection. Let's take the gospel at face value and just follow the story honestly as it unfolds and not try to make it look pretty. It may make you feel a bit uncomfortable because the people in this story may not be as pious as you think they are. But I guarantee you, you will find them startlingly real and authentically human. After a two-day delay, Jesus finally goes to Bethany. He arrives and Lazarus is dead. Martha doesn't wait for Jesus to come to her house. She catches him before he enters the town. She goes there to let Jesus have it. Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. Martha then goes to tell Mary, Jesus wants to see you. So Mary goes out to the same place. She gives Jesus the business too. If you had only been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. You're late. What's wrong with you? Oh, sure, we make a big dinner for you and you arrive on the dot. If you need a place to stay, you knock on the door exactly on schedule. But when my brother was sick, you took your old sweet time. Where were you? You didn't do what I needed you to do for me. So now I'm questioning your love. You ever do that to the Lord? When everything falls apart and nothing is working out, when you face failure or ruin, betrayal or disappointment, suffering, or maybe it's something embarrassing, a sin that shames you, something that would destroy you if anyone ever found out. And so what do you do? You hide it away. You push down the guilt and the shame, down, 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 down as deep as Lazarus's tomb. You cover it up and you roll a stone over the entrance to keep everyone from discovering it. And then you pray that Jesus will come and wave his hands or do whatever he does when he works a miracle. And then you wait. And Jesus delays. And you realize he's not done for you what he's done for others. It's understandable that you begin to question Jesus' concern for you or his power to help you or even the sincerity of his love. I get why Martha and Mary are upset. I do. I'd rather Jesus show up when my married friends are arguing all the time rather than waiting for the divorce to be final. I want Jesus to show up when the infection is diagnosed, not when someone is on the ventilator. I've begged Jesus to show up when I finally get the courage to, sell, to tell someone that I'm concerned about their drinking. It would be better for Jesus to show up at that moment rather than at the scene of a car accident at the end of a night of drinking. But we have to face reality. Sometimes Jesus delays, even for the people he loves. 
Like with Lazarus, sometimes Jesus doesn't show up at the sickbed. He shows up at the grave. And when that happens, there is a critical lesson to be learned. Think of it from Jesus' point of view for a moment. It's as if Jesus is saying, okay, I didn't do what you expected me to do because you equate me loving you with me doing what you want me to do for you. But you need to learn that I love you even if you don't get what you want. It's almost like God allows us to get to that uncomfortable point in our lives to even face disillusionment in order to help us get rid of the notion that we can measure his love based on his willingness to do what we want him to do for us. Because if that's the case, that isn't love. It's only God buying our affections with a favor. It's us being rewarded for good behavior. In the Lazarus story, Jesus breaks us of that false notion. Our lives are always going to be better when we can be free of that shallow understanding of love that is easily shattered when we don't get what we want. Instead, we have to learn to trust Jesus always. Let me point out a little detail in the Lazarus story. It's little, but it's important. Jesus doesn't barge in on Martha and Mary. He knew that family so well that normally I suppose he would probably walk in the back door and then grab a chair at the kitchen table. Not this time. They go to meet him at the edge of the village, away from their home. By attitude and words, both women say to Jesus, Not today, Lord. Today, you keep your distance. And Jesus complies. Never forget this. Jesus only comes in as far as we let him. But there is a really important part right here. Here's where we learn the most critical lesson. With both of these women, there is a moment of realization. Martha is the model. Jesus asks her, with everything that's happened, in your sadness, your disappointment, your grief, with your shaky faith, will you trust me now? Martha takes a deep breath and says, even now, I know whatever you ask, God will give you. Even now, Lord, though I don't understand why you have delayed, I choose to trust you because you are here with me. There's something about this statement of trust and faith that gives Jesus the green light. So Jesus says to Mary, show me where you put Lazarus. Take me to the grave. Take me to the place you don't want anyone else to see. And they take Jesus down that narrow street to the tomb with all the steps. He tells them to take away the stone. He's not going to do it for them. We always have to let Jesus in. Jesus needs us to freely reveal to him the places that are dark. He needs us to allow him into the places where we bury things, where we bury our guilt, our shame, our disappointments, and even our doubts. No matter how deep they are, once we give Jesus the green light, he starts calling out at the top of his lungs. His word will have power. He will breathe new life into death. He will work his miracle and demonstrate his love for us in ways that we could never expect it. Like Martha and Mary, you may be keeping Jesus today at the edge of the town. Up to now, you might be saying, only this far, Lord. But in this moment, I invite you to give the response that Martha and Mary gave. Even now, Lord, I trust you. Even now, in my confusion and disappointment, I believe. I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Friends, Jesus promises 
If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in God's love for each of us, let us offer our prayers. For Pope Francis, Bishop John, and all leaders in the church, that the Holy Spirit may guide them towards greater unity and faith in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that guided by integrity and wisdom, they may work together so that peace may flourish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for a greater respect for all life, remembering those who are most vulnerable, for the sick and the elderly, those with disabilities, those who have no homes and those in prisons, refugees of war, the poor and the immigrant, and those yet to be born. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Catholic Church and our own parish. May our observance of Lent call us to solidarity with those who suffer and generosity towards our brothers and sisters in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Richard Willis from our parish, may our deceased parishioners and all the faithful departed rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today we offer this Mass especially for Kathleen and Charles Saranko. For this intention, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we lift up these prayers to you. Please answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing the hymn for the preparation of the gifts, number 184, My Soul is Thirsting. We will not repeat the refrain. Draw. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life 
and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Take away. 
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly with you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in our communion hymn number 182 out of the depths, number 182. <clears throat>
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before we conclude Mass, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, so, first of all, tomorrow evening we're going to have our annual Lenten penance service here at All Saints. So tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, we'll start with a very brief service, and then we'll have six priests here available to hear confessions. So uh, a number of priests from the area will be here, so I hope you'll be able to join us, especially if you haven't been able to make a confession yet this Lent. So uh, please consider joining us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here in church. Uh, on Tuesday night, we have our Stations of the Cross. We've been having a wonderful turnout for stations uh, and then also for soup and sandwiches afterwards. So this Tuesday, we continue at 6 o'clock with stations, 6.30 for uh, the uh, soup and sandwiches downstairs. Thank you to everybody who's been so helpful with that and for all the people who have been participating. On Wednesday evening, there, there will be no religious education classes this week because of the uh, spring break here in Gladstone, so no CCD this week. Uh, I want to call your attention also to next weekend. Of course, it will be our monthly Knights of Columbus Parish Breakfast uh, after the Sunday morning Masses. Also next weekend, we'll be having the annual uh, Tootsie Roll Fun Drive for the Knights of Columbus. So they'll be at the doors of our church. You'll probably see them around town this week selling Tootsie Rolls. Um, of course, the proceeds of the Tootsie Roll sale uh, raises lots of money that is used for all the uh, different charities for the Knights of Columbus every year. So just wanted to make you aware of that next weekend. And finally, of course, uh, Holy Week is quickly approaching. And so in the lobby of church, as you're leaving on the left-hand side, uh, you will see that there is uh, some sign-ups for liturgical ministries down in the lobby. So if you can be a Eucharistic minister, a lector, or a server, or an usher uh, during the Holy Week services, uh, please sign up as you're leaving church today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 181, These 40 Days of Lent, number 181.